There's one major lesson that's helped me to buy hundreds of profitable real estate investing deals over the last 18 years. The lesson is this. If you want a great real estate deal, you have to invest your time and your money into deal finding. In other words, you can't just passively sit and wait for deals to land in your lap. You can't just depend on a real estate agent, on the multiple listing service, or on Zillow to find your great deals. It's really very simple. The investors who get the best real estate deals are the ones who proactively market and hunt for those deals. So if you want more real estate deals, you've got to do the same thing. And to help you do that, in this video, I'm going to share 12 different marketing strategies that I personally use to find good real estate deals over the years. And we're getting started right now. If we haven't met yet, my name is Chad Carson. You can also call me a coach. And my mission on this channel is to help you invest in real estate, achieve financial independence, and do more of what matters. The first marketing strategy I want to talk to you about is something called driving for dollars. Now, if I only had one thing I could do, if you took away all my other marketing strategies or if you dropped me in a new city and said, start over, this is the strategy I would go to. It's something I've never stopped doing for the last 18 years. And it works generally like this. First part is you have to pick a farm neighborhood. So you're not gonna all just drive everywhere aimlessly around the city. You wanna be deliberate and pick an area where you think there's the property types and the price range that you're looking for. The second thing is you just schedule some walks or some driving. I like walking neighborhoods. If you have a dog and you wanna walk your dog, if you have kids you wanna push in a stroller, if you like to exercise, it's a great way to kind of double task there. But you either drive or walk in a neighborhood deliberately inside that farm area. And what are you look, doing and looking for? You're trying to identify a few different things. One, you're looking for vacant properties. Two, you might be looking for properties that are not vacant, they're occupied, but they're in disrepair. So they need something done to them. The roof is looks like the shingles are falling off and a lot, needs a lot of paint on the outside. It looks like a fixer upper. Or maybe you see something that's an obvious legal action. Sometimes with a foreclosure, you'll see stickers on the windows or maybe it's a code violation from the local municipality. So any of those, they don't mean they're a deal necessarily, but they indicate that there might be some kind of issue. Maybe there's an heir who's inherited this property and they live halfway across the country. Maybe it's a landlord who is evicted a tenant and they don't wanna get back in the landlord business anymore. So it's just a possibility, it increases the likelihood that you know it's in your location and then also it might be somebody who'd wanna sell you the property. So the final step is you reach out to them either through a phone call or mail. So there's some research process. You write these down. You can do it really simply on a piece of paper or you can actually use a digital tool. And I have a cheat sheet that has all 12 of these strategies. If you wanna get that and download it, it's in the video description below. And in there, I also include some tech tools specifically for driving for dollars that I really like that allows you to not have to do all the physical stuff I used to do, writing on pieces of paper, using spreadsheets. It's as simple as you ride around with your, your phone and the app, you press a button, you follow up with those people, they give you the phone number, and you can even send mail from your phone while you're sitting there in front of the house. Really cool app, check it out in my cheat sheet that gives you all the kind of the details on some of these strategies that we're going over. The bottom line though is driving for dollars is an efficient, targeted way to find deals, and I think it's one you should check out. The second marketing strategy I wanna to talk to you about is something called the MLS or the Multiple Listing Service. Now I know I said earlier in the video that you can't just depend on that, but this is still a great tool in a lot of ways and I've bought many properties off the Multiple Listing Service and even in a competitive market, every once in a while you'll find a deal. So the positive is that as a buyer, this is free for you. You can go to a real estate agent who you can have on your team who can automatically send you leads through their MLS technology system for free to your email box every single day. So why wouldn't you do that? There's a lot of listings out there. There's still a lot of properties sold. So those are positives. The negative is there's a lot of competition. So particularly in a hot market, this is gonna be one of the tougher strategies to find deals. But I'll, I'll tell you what's worked for me over the years. With MLS, you either need to be the first buyer there, meaning you move really quickly. As soon as that deal comes on the market, you know, 10, 20 minutes later, you're out of the house or you're making an offer on it that quickly. If you wait a next to the next day, you're done. You've got to move really quickly. Or I've also found that if you're the last one, if you're the ones who's most persistent, so let's say you make an offer, it falls through, or they say no, they reject your offer. Don't give up on that. You know, it might be that that property really is over overpriced on the market. And if you keep following up with the agent, let them know you're still a buyer. I have done deals where everybody else sort of disappeared and the deal fell apart with another buyer or something else happened. And I was the last one who continued following up. So you either need to be quick or you need to be persistent or do both to have a successful multiple listing service strategy. The third marketing strategy I wanna share with you is something called networking groups. The idea here is to go out and find other investors, other professionals 
and talk to them about what you're looking for, the types of properties, the locations, and then you'll start getting referrals from some of these people because not everybody gets leads in the real estate investing business and they can't always do something with that lead. But if they know you're looking in a certain neighborhood or you buy a certain kind of property, there's an exchange that happens between other real estate investors. So where can you find these kinds of groups? There's some in person, there's some online. Uh, I've been a member of my local, what's called a RIA group, a real estate investing association. I'm in the upstate of South Carolina at the Upstate Real Estate Investors Association. These groups are great for education. So people meet up, they have a meeting every month, they learn, but there's also a lot of subgroups. Every In my personal Upstate uh, chapter, there's probably 10 or 15 groups that meet about all sorts of topics, mobile homes, professional groups, short-term rentals, things like that. And so if you go ahead and network with those, you'll be in small groups of 10 to 15 people, and there's a lot of exchanging of going on, not just ideas, also deal-making. There's also more informal meetups. So if you look at like meetup.com or something, you can find these informal meetups or just talk to other investors. Say, are there any groups that meet up and talk? You'll find there's breakfast clubs, there's people that just meet, meet up and have a beer and talk real estate. And so either one of those, whether you're looking, Googling a formal kind of real estate investor association or informal meetups, in person can be a great source of deals. You make relationships with those people. I also love some online tools. I'm a big fan of Bigger Pockets. They publish my book, Retire Early with Real Estate, and they've been known for a long time time the online networking source so you go into forums and they have some particularly some local forums on bigger pockets where you can network with other real estate agents other real estate investors exchange ideas but also exchange deals as well and then there's also facebook groups so just look out there search on facebook for local real estate investing groups you can find those and there's also some deal making that happens in those groups as well the fourth marketing strategy is one that I've had some pretty good luck with over the years is outreach to professionals. So the idea here is to reach out to other business professionals in your location and let them know what you do, what you're looking for, the types of properties you're buying, the types of individuals who might be a seller for you uh, with a property, and just let them know to keep you in mind. So this could be people, particularly real estate agents. So letting all the real estate agents in your area know, both residential agents and commercial agents. I found that sometimes commercial agents are looking for larger properties. Every once in a while, they'll get a house, a duplex, a triplex, quadruplex. They're really not in their wheelhouse. They're looking for bigger listings and they'll refer those to me and then I'll pay them a referral fee. The same with residential listings. Sometimes people specialize in brand new, big, nice houses or not just fixer upper houses like we like to buy. And, and so they'll send me those sometimes if they talk to a, a, a person who's selling a house and it doesn't work out on the listing, they'll refer them to me and then I'll, I'll pay them a referral fee. So agents are a great source, don't give up on that. But you can also talk to attorneys, CPAs, insurance agents, financial advisors and let them know what you're doing. Now you're not gonna get a ton of leads from these types of sources, but every once in a while they have clients who have a situation where they're like, oh, this house is just like an albatross around my neck. I can't spend the 40, 50,000 bucks it takes to fix it up. I'm the heir of the estate or I'm the executor of the estate and my three siblings are out of state and they're not doing any of the work. They might have that kind of conversation and if they said, hey, I know a person named Chad, he might be a good person to talk to. He's an investor, he's not gonna pay full price for it, but he's somebody you could talk to. So that's the kind of conversation that happens. And how do you make these relationships? Some of it, I used to just do some outreach directly to attorneys and people and send letters to them to introduce myself. I've also found the best way though is getting to know people by volunteering and being active in your community, particularly if you're investing locally. So I do a lot of volunteering now and just trying to improve my community. I'm trying to build bike lanes and, and, and walking paths all around my community. I, was also, I also used to be a member of the Rotary Club. And so civic groups, chamber of commerce, things like that, that's where you meet other local professionals. And so that's a way if you're, you're going to be doing that anyway, if you're interested in contributing to your community, that's a great way to meet these types of people, but be sure to let them know what you're doing, how they can help and how you can refer business to one another. The fifth marketing strategy I wanna share with you is pretty simple. It's to reach out to wholesalers. Now, what is a wholesaler? A wholesaler is essentially a professional deal finder. So all these things we're talking about right now, you might even be a wholesaler watching this, but if you're not a wholesaler, be sure to get on the list of wholesalers. They, they, their job is to go out and find deals. They're spending money on marketing. They're spending time. Perhaps they have more time than you do. And they, they have deals that they then flip to other investors many, in many cases. So if you are an investor who is on their list, they'll let you know they have a property under contract or that they've just bought a property and you can buy that property from them. So get on the list. But I also suggest take that to another level. Get to know the wholesalers. Just like with real estate agents on the MLS, every once in a while deals will fall through or they're asking you know, one price, but then they some other, another buyer backs out 
and you just want to let them know what they're what you're looking for and every once in a while you'll get some just referral deals directly from wholesalers and you get to know what they're looking for where they're finding good deals this is just a theme and all of these is get to know people this is a people business and so not, not only get on the volume of lists of wholesalers when you go to your RIA groups and you go to your meetups always be looking for wholesalers and get on their list but get to know them talk to them you'll find that sometimes you'll get deals that other people don't because you had those conversations and you get to know the wholesalers marketing strategy number six is direct mail and boy is this a big topic but it's one that's been so fruitful for me over the years all of the other previous marketing strategies that i've talked about were pretty low cost this is one that you might have to start spending some money both on buying a list of people that you're going to send direct mail to but also in the actual mailing of the the envelopes the postcards whatever you choose to do so let me let me just say that there's a lot of approaches and if you actually want me to do a more in-depth deep dive on direct mail let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see and i'll be sure to do a future video on all the different direct mail strategies but for now i want to give you just a simple approach it's probably kind of lowest hanging fruit and my process is to do this now part a is find a location kind of like driving for dollars maybe the same location you're doing that in try to build a list in that location the second part is narrow that down by property types. So if you're looking for single family houses, narrow it down by single family. If you're looking for multifamily, mobile homes, developable land, whatever it is, try to narrow that down. And you can do this. There's, there's some technology out there. There's some list building services that I'm going to share with you on that cheat sheet that you can download for free in the video description. So check that out for my latest advice on who to use for that. But you'll be able to filter all of this a list build a list of people with mailing addresses who own properties in a certain location have a certain property type and then i would also add who've owned the property for a certain period of time so what you're looking for is people who've had time for the property to go up in value or they've had time to pay their loan down so they have more equity in the property it's more likely to be a deal for you if they've owned it for five or ten years and had some time to build up some equity than somebody who just bought the property and or had to sell it at a loss in order to sell you to you at a good deal so if you look for lists like that and then send simple mail, make it very personal, make it from you personally. If you can handwrite it, that'd be great. That would take a lot of time, but at least handwrite the envelopes, put it in a personal looking envelope, send it, have a very simple message. Here's my phone number. Here's my email. I'd like to buy your house. Please call me if you're interested. That's a simple approach to direct mail. It's worked for me over the years. Test it out, see how it works for you. And just know there's a lot more to direct mail, but that's a nice simple list that you can start with just to kind of improve your chances of finding some good deals. So we're about halfway through the list of 12 marketing strategies. So I wanna pause briefly to ask you, is this helpful so far? Is this something that you can use in your real estate investing business? Or do you have any comments or questions for me? I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. The seventh marketing strategy is a website. Now this might sound kind of obvious in the age of the internet when almost every business has a website, but if you're buying properties, a website can be very helpful to help you find good deals. Now, kind of like some of the other ones, this is one that you're gonna to have to invest a little bit of money in. And so this might not be the brand new beginner strategy if you're just doing your first deal or two. But over time, this is a great place to reinvest your money. And you can think about your website in a few different ways. The first is it's a tool to generate leads. So you can find what are called organic leads and paid leads. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about paid in another strategy. Organic leads just mean that people naturally find you by searching on Google or any other search engine. And so it's a long game. It's not easy to get ranked in the top of Google organic search rankings. Usually the first two or three things that you search for are the ones you click on. So if you're not in those top two or three, you almost get no leads at all. But over time, if you have links to your website, if you have helpful information, you can start getting searches, particularly if you niche down to a really small area and say, I'm the person who buys properties in Clemson, South Carolina. Maybe I have more people looking for me that way. So it's a lead generation tool. It's also a landing page for some of your other marketing. So I'm gonna talk about advertisements. I've also talked about direct mail. You can send people to your website in order to find out more about you, to build credibility, which is the third point of a website, where they realize that you're actually legitimate. You're not just a fly by night type person. They can see pictures of you. They can see testimonials from other customers. And so a landing page, is also a place importantly where they can have a call to action to fill out a questionnaire to tell you about themselves so you actually have leads coming into you into your business to your inbox so that you can then follow up with them instead of having to always be chasing down other people they're proactively coming to you and this is a big step it was a big step in my business when i actually had people reaching out to me through my website saying i want to sell my house that's the power of a website 
And of course, there's some tech tools that go along with this. So once again, check out my cheat sheet for this uh, video that has some of my recommendations up to date on which tech tools might be helpful for you to build a real estate investing website. The eighth marketing strategy is the use of ads. And there's a few different ways to approach advertising. The first that might be the most popular that you've heard of is called pay-per-click advertising. And even if you haven't heard of it, you have probably used it or seen it. If you look on Google, if you look on YouTube, you look on Facebook, they make their revenue by submitting ads to people who are using those services. And there are advertisers who pay for those ads, typically per click. There's also some other ways to do that. This is another one of those higher investment activities, but there are real estate investors out there who are targeting certain audiences on Google, on Facebook, on YouTube, and use, putting their ads saying, I buy houses in this area, having a contact information, probably sending them to a website, and it could be a great funnel. The key is that, that you wanna make more money and you have a, a cost per acquisition. So it might be like $1,000. You say, you know, I'm willing to spend $1,000 in ads for every deal that I do. Maybe it's more than that. It depends on how much money you make and what kind of return on investment you make. This is a little bit more of an advanced strategy, but also don't look past other types of advertising. Traditionally, this is not as effective as it used to be. There are classified ads in newspapers. I used to do that all the time. It's not as effective, but there's still some little classified ad newspapers that you might wanna try out to see if they work. You might wanna try out online advertising. You know, It goes off and on whether Craigslist or things like that actually work, but check out classifieds. If people are looking to sell a house or to buy a house, then they might also want to see your service of buying houses. Then also don't look past local advertising. And there's all sorts of different uh, avenues you could go here. There's a website called Nextdoor that you can buy advertising. I haven't tried that as a real estate investor, but that's one I would start turning my volume up on marketing. I might look into that. I used to do radio advertising on the sports talk radio station. It was a great venue. I bought deals every single year from that. And then also think about local websites. There's there anywhere that your customers and your location, potential people who might sell you a property, wherever they're hanging out online, offline, that's a place that you could see if you could pay to advertise and then just test your return on investment. That's what it's all about to make sure you're getting enough return. You're doing enough deals to justify the amount of money you're spending. The ninth marketing strategy I want to share is something called cold calls. And all this means is that you're gonna reach out to people who have put themselves out there through an advertisement or some kind of other public outreach to say they either wanna rent their house or they wanna sell their house. And you reach out to them directly and ask them if they wanna sell it to you. So for rent by owners particularly have been one of my favorites over the years, as you're driving for dollars or walking for dollars, you're gonna notice for rent signs. In particular, when you have an individual who's renting their house, not necessarily a property manager, you could reach out and do a couple things. One, you could learn what they're renting the house for, to get a little bit of market intelligence, just to compare it to what you might rent a property for, but also take that time to transition the conversation and say, I know I called about the rental, but would you consider selling the house? I'm actually looking to buy a house in this neighborhood. I would love to talk to you about that. You know, one out of 10 maybe says, yeah, I'd consider selling it, but that's kind of the nature of cold calls. You're not gonna get every single one is gonna be a good, uh, a good prospect. So that's the negative of cold calls. It's a numbers game. But if you're willing to do that, it's free to call for rent signs, to call for sale by owner signs, or to look for advertising. So if it's just a public listing, you could call them and talk to them. They've put themselves out there as someone who wants to rent or sell, call them up, talk to them, see if they are a prospect for someone who could sell a house to you. Tenth marketing strategy are signs. Now signs are a low cost way to get a pretty high return on the number of leads and deals you can buy. There's some positives and negatives to using signs. You can see my beautiful rendition here of what one of those yard signs might look like. They're plastic. You can typically put them with like stakes in a yard. Sometimes you can nail them to poles. I'll talk about what that, what that means to like a telephone pole. Um, but the, probably the best uses, the most safe uses of those, or think about when you have a, a house that is for rent that you are for, fixing it up to sell it, could you not put a yard sign in that yard of the house you're fixing up saying, I buy houses, have your phone number on it. Maybe say fast cash, something like that, to talk about the benefits. You could put that sign in a house you already own, and you're typically gonna be within the realm of the local sign ordinances. You have to check out your local municipality. Most municipalities are not okay with putting signs on telephone poles, putting them at intersections, things like that, and you might get in trouble for that. But check out your, your ordinance locally. Can you put it in your yard of a house you own temporarily while you're fixing it up, while you're trying to rent it? You could have that right next to your for rent sign. That's a missed opportunity that a lot of investors don't do. Another one, and this would be embarrassing for some people, of course, but could you put signs on your car? This is something I did 
in my second year in business, I believe, I had my Toyota Camry that I'd owned since I was 16 years old. And somebody challenged me at a seminar that a class I was taking saying, you know, you're full time in this business. You have to survive making money buying houses. Are you too embarrassed or do you actually want to make money? And their challenge was put some signs on your car. So I put some big obnoxious, we buy houses, here's my phone number. I ended up buying at least a house or two every single year for like five or six years. It was an extremely productive return on my investment for something I spent a few hundred bucks on. So are you willing to do that or not? That's up to you, but I'm just telling you it's effective and you could use magnetic signs or vinyl signs to put it on your car. Bandit signs are a term you might hear of where I was mentioning earlier, putting them on public right of ways, telephone poles, typically gonna be against the site ordinance. Maybe your town, you could check it out, maybe it's not. I've also seen investors sometimes putting them out on the weekends, maybe at intersections, kind of like a yard sale sign, taking them up on Sundays just to avoid any issues that way. You'll have to find out what you're comfortable with in that respect, but signs are something that could be effective for you. It could be pretty low cost at, you know, five, 10 bucks per sign to get the word out about your home buying business. The 11th marketing strategy is auctions. Now, auctions are probably something you're familiar with. You've heard of eBay where products get auctioned off to the highest bidder, but you might not know that real estate also has auctions as well. Now, most real estate sold in a more traditional manner, but there are auction companies out there. And my recommendation is just to get on the list of some of these auction companies. There might be banks who have foreclosed on a property who just wanna sell it. There might be people who inherited a property and they're selling a group of them at auction. There are lots of different situations, but the theme is with most, most auctions and there's different types of auctions, they're gonna sell it at a certain period of time with a lot of people, whoever's gonna show up on site and whoever the bidder is gets the chance at buying that house. Sometimes there's an absolute auction where the highest bidder wins it. Sometimes there's a reserve where the person who owns it can say, I'll either accept that or not. But the point is there are opportunities to be had. It's a numbers game again. When you're looking at auctions, you're not gonna get every one, but you wanna be aware of what properties in your location are being auctioned off. So get on all the companies, Google uh, the auction companies in your area, and then find out who they are, get on their list. There's also some national auction websites. So it's become a little bit more popular for certain companies, banks particularly, to sell some of their houses with auctions. And if you look at my cheat sheet that I have for free that you can find in the video description, I'll give a list of a few of the auction websites that I found out there. There's probably more, but I'll keep that updated and share those with you so you can also check out the auction websites to find opportunities in your location. The 12th and final marketing strategy that I wanna share with you today is just called word of mouth. And I've saved the last one for one of my favorites because this is a way I've bought a lot of deals over the years but it takes a little time to build up, but it's a great free way that you ought to be taking advantage of letting everyone in your world know what you do. This is kind of like the car sign thing. You might be embarrassed to put it out there that you're doing something new. Maybe people will say something, be critical of it, but you gotta, you gotta let people know. You gotta let people know that you're buying properties in a certain area before they can tell you that they found somebody who meets that situation. So your family, your friends, your colleagues, maybe you go to a church and they have people there who you can tell. Maybe you're members of groups that you can tell about. All of these people need to know. Well, how do you let them know that in a more natural way? Some of my favorites are, what about the PS of your emails? So every time you email somebody or reply to an email, you can do those auto, auto uh, fill in PS's for your emails where it just puts your name and your phone number, things like that. Instead of doing that, put a PS that says, by the way, if you ever see a property that looks like this or this or this, it's vacant, it's in these locations, I buy properties that need work in these locations, please let me know. You can send me a text at this phone number or an email here at this address. That's letting people know in a very natural way what you do. You could also, I've seen people wear t-shirts, you know, maybe it's fun, maybe it's, you know, just saying something about what you're doing. There's lots of t-shirts online that are kind of fun about real estate investing. And you could have your, it just it's a conversation starter. It doesn't even have to have your number on it. It's just like, oh, what do you do? Why do you have that t-shirt on? It starts a conversation. You could go old school and have business cards, hand those out to people. I really like the idea of social media. So you're on social media, use that to your advantage. You could take little videos when you're out looking at a house, just share what you're up to. Say, hey, here's my story. I'm looking at this property. Hopefully it works out. I buy properties in this location. This might be one that I buy. If you do buy a property, tell the story. You could even go as far as what I do. You can make YouTube videos. You could have a podcast. That's kind of a higher level thing. But in a local uh, market, you could be the podcast for real estate agents and attorneys and pe interview people locally. That'd be a great strategy to get the word of mouth out about what you do. And then just small talk. When you're talking to people, you're talking about the weather, you're talking about other things that really aren't that important. Talk about what you do. Have the little elevator, elevator pitch that says, 
this is where I buy, this is what I'm looking for. And you will definitely get some deals by just putting the word out there. People will send you referrals, they'll send you texts. I used to have my UPS guy every once in a while when he'd deliver a box or a FedEx person or an Amazon person, they would write a, an address on the box saying this property is vacant, you ought to go check it out. That's pretty cool when you have people letting you know about properties that you're looking for. So I wanna summarize everything we've covered here and the main takeaway lesson is that if you wanna buy good real estate investing deals, you've gotta invest in deal finding. Now you can invest your time. If you don't have a lot of money, that's okay. There's a lot of opportunities that I shared with you today that could just be your time to get out there and find deals. But if you have some money to reinvest, if you flipped a house or two, reinvest some of that money in marketing. It's one of the best return on investments you can get. And my advice with this video, you've just watched all 12 strategies Think about this like a buffet restaurant. You've just walked into a restaurant, you have a plate, you're not gonna put all the food on your plate from that buffet. Pick one or two that really makes sense for you that you think you can actually take action on. Put those on your plate, apply them, do them, and then iterate. If they don't work, go back and tweak it a little bit, try something else. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. That's what being a deal finder in real estate is all about. And I hope you have found all of these lessons really helpful. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, the thumbs up to help me spread the word to others on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss anything. I have new videos that come out every Monday morning for my podcast and every Friday morning for videos just like this. If you like the topic of this video, I think you'll like my next video, which is where I share five of my biggest mistakes that I've made over the last 18 years. Now this was hard for me to make to share the things I screwed up, but I always thought it would be helpful as I was getting into real estate investing and learning to learn how other people screwed up so that I could avoid that for myself. That's what all this video is about. It's very vulnerable showing some of those things that I've screwed up, but I think you'll find it helpful. You can find a link in the video description below or above me here on the screen. You've been watching Coach Carson TV. My name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach, and this is a channel all about investing in real estate, achieving financial independence, and doing more of what matters. See you next time.